Okay. We were at the presence and non disappearance condition. Right? So, presence condition and non disappearance condition are the same. And they are of five kinds. They are cognizance, pre-nascence, post-nascence, edible food, and material life. Now these two conditions, identical in meaning and differing only in the letter. So they mean the same thing. One is presence and the other is non-disappearance. In this relationship, a conditioning state helps the conditioned states to arise or persist in being during a time when it exists alongside the conditioned states. They must be present at the moment when they are assisting the other, other states. It is not necessary, however, for the conditioning state and the conditioned states to be cognizant. It is not necessary, but they can be cognizant also. All that is required is for the two to temporarily overlap and for the conditioning state to support in some way the conditioned states during the time they overlap. Sometimes the conditioning state arises before and then conditioned states arise later. Or sometimes conditioning state will arrive later and conditioned states arrive before. But when one is supporting the other, they must be present. When the text mentions only five types of present conditions, since these five in turn include additional subsidiary types, present condition comprises a wide variety of other conditions. So there can many conditions can be grouped under the heading the present condition. This will become clear in the next section which deals with the subsumption of all conditional relations under the four master conditions. So present condition and non disappearance condition are of five kinds and we have already met them before. So now the manual tells us that all these 24 conditions can be reduced to four conditions. All conditions are included in the conditions of object, decisive support, karma, and presence. Now, in this case, Teachers have different opinions. One subcommentary teacher says that it means any condition can be included in object condition, every condition can be included in decisive support or karma and presence. So that is one opinion. But that opinion is not accepted by uh, many later teachers. So later teachers try to show us uh, which types of conditions could be grouped under uh, which condition. And so in the note it is said that the Lady Shadow explains in some way uh, different from the other sub-commentary. So, if you look at the table on page 323, you will see that. Now, under object condition are grouped object predominance, base object pre nascent support, object presence, and dissociation. And then under decisive support, object predominance, base object pre nascent support, object pre nascent asynchronous karma, dissociation, proximity, contiguity, repetition, absence, and disappearance. And under karma, only one asynchronous karma. And under presence, now, there are many. 
object predominance, cognizance predominance, cognizance support, base predominance support, base object predominance support, base predominance, cognizance karma, dissociation, root, cognizance, mutuality, results, nutriment, faculty, jhana, path, association, non-disappearance, and post nascence. There are so many. And also, the conditions are grouped according to what uh, we may call families. The cognizance family, object family, proximity family, and so on. And then there is a note by the author of the original manual, and that is the, the word cognizant material phenomena. What does it mean? Now, if he does not define uh, this word in Pali, Sahajada Ruba, we may not understand it, or we may misunderstand it, we may make mistakes. And so here, the author gave us uh, what he meant by cognizant material phenomena. Because the word cognizant material phenomena was used in describing the different relations uh, previously. So now he defines the term he used, cognizant material phenomena. So that should be understood as twofold. Whenever cognizant material phenomena, this term, is met, then we must understand one of two things. One is, throughout the course of existence, that means after rebirth, they should be understood as those born of consciousness. So, cognizant material phenomena in one sense means only those born of consciousness. Not all types of material properties, but those that are born of consciousness or that are caused by consciousness and and they are in the course of existence that means during life after rebirth and at rebirth linking as those born of karma so at rebirth linking the cognition material phenomena means material properties born of karma or caused by karma or uh, that are the results of karma. Now we go to the summary. Thus, the things pertaining to the three periods of time and timeless, internal and external, conditioned and unconditioned, are threefold by way of concepts mind and matter. That means, now the other has shown us the 24 uh, relations and also how different states are related. These 24 relations can be reduced to just concepts, mind and matter. And concepts, mind and matter that belongs to three periods of time, that means past, present and future, and also timeless, now Nibbana is timeless and concept is timeless and then internal and external, and conditioned and unconditioned. All except Nibbana are conditioned, and Nibbana is unconditioned. So all these 24 conditions are just concepts, mind, and matter. So now the other is going to define mind and also concepts in the next section. Now before we go to the next section, let us go back to dependent origination. And we cannot do these charts, all of them here, but we will take just one link and try to understand. So it is Paticca Samubara by way of 24 Patthana conditions. So in the Paticca Samubara or dependent origination, the first link is between 
ignorance and karma formations. Conditioned by ignorance, formations arise uh, because there is ignorance as condition, there are formations and so on. So that means ignorance conditions formations. And ignorance means moha in or moha that is concomitant with 12 akusala chaitas because moha arises with all 12 akusala chaitas. And formations means formation of merit, formations of demerit, and formations of imperturbable. Now formations of merit means chitana or volition concomitant with eight kama vajra kusala and five rupa vajra kusala chaitas. And formations of demerit means Volition in all twelve akusala chaitas and formations of imperturbable means volition in four aruba vajra of immaterial wholesome chaitas. So ignorance is a condition for these three kinds of formations. That means ignorance and formations are related. How are they related? In what way or uh, by what conditioning force? Now here you read the first one, conditioning ignorance. And then the conditioned formations of merit. So formations of merit means uh, chitana in eight kama vajra kusala and five ruba vajra kusala chaitas. And then under the conditions, you see two and nine. And then in the brackets, one, zero, two. So in order to understand it, you have to have the list of the 24 um, Patana conditions handy with you. So number two means object condition, and number nine means decisive support condition. So that means ignorance is a condition for formations of merit by way of object and by way of decisive support. And for this information you can read paragraph 102 in chapter 17 in the uh, book called Path of Purification. The book Path of Purification is the English translation of uh, Visuddhi Maga. Now, ignorance is a condition for formations of merit by way of object. Now, that means when you practice, say, vipassana meditation, you may take ignorance as object of your contemplation, object of your attention. You may try to see ignorance as arising and disappearing, as impermanent and so on. So when you practice vipassana on ignorance or taking ignorance as object of vipassana, then ignorance is, is the conditioning state and your vipassana Consciousness is the conditioned state. And also, those who can read the other people's minds, for those, they can take the ignorance of other people as object, and when they enter into that supernormal knowledge and sees or knows the ignorance in the mind of another person, then that ignorance is the condition for his uh, supernormal knowledge consciousness. So in that way, ignorance is an object condition for the formations of merit. And also ignorance can be number nine, decisive support condition for formations of merit. 
Now you try to diminish ignorance, uh, you try to get rid of ignorance by practicing meritorious deeds, by practicing dana or keeping precepts or practicing meditation. So in that case, the ignorance is the decisive support condition for your merit. So in this way, ignorance is a condition for formations of merit in two ways, by way of being in an object and by way of the decisive support. And in order to reduce ignorance, say you try to practice meditation to get jhana. And then when you get the jhana, then that jhana is said to be conditioned by ignorance by way of decisive support or strong support. So in that way, ignorance can be a conditioning state for the jhanas. So here, conditioning state, which is ignorance, and conditioned states, formation of merit, belong to different times or different locations. But next is the ignorance to formations of demerit. That means ignorance to jitana in 12 akusala. 12 unwholesome chetas. Here also there can be number two object condition. And there can be aramana dipiti, that means predominant, uh, object predominant condition, and also aramana upanisya, object decisive support. Taking ignorance as object, there can arise akusala, unwholesome chitas. So when unwholesome chitas arise taking ignorance as object, then ignorance is the conditioning factor of object for the conditioned state that is the volition in akusala chitas. And if the object is taken closely or if the object can exert strong influence on the consciousness then we can have the Aramana Adibadi and Aramana Upanisaya. And also there is number nine here again the decisive support. The former ignorance can be a decisive support for the later volition in one of the twelve akusala chetas. And then there is four, five, what is four? Proximity. Number five, contiguity. So there can be proximity, contiguity, and anandara upanisha, it is a variety of number nine. Contiguity, decisive support, and 12 repetition and 22 absence and 23 disappearance. Now, they, they can be explained by taking these jivanas as example. Suppose there are seven moments of jivana of unwholesome chaitas. With each of the jivana consciousness, there is ignorance. And there is volition. So, ignorance concomitant with, say, first jivana is a proximity condition for chitana or volition concomitant with second javana and so on. So there is first javana, first javana ceases so that second javana can arise and second javana ceases so that 
that jivana can arise and so on. So there is this proximity condition between the first jivana and second, second and third and so on. And since there is ignorance with all the jivanas and volition with all the jivanas, now we have these uh, conditions, the proximity condition, contiguity condition and so on. So when there is proximity condition, there is always the contiguity condition and then 22 and 23, absence condition and disappearance condition. Now number 12, repetition condition is for wholesome or unwholesome and functional consciousness. Since here we take unwholesome consciousness, the Chaitanya uh, with unwholesome consciousness as conditioned state, we get the repetition condition also. And then 1, 6, 7, 8, 19, 21, 24. One is the root condition. Now let us take the first Akusala Chaita. With the first Akusala Chaita, there are arise ignorance and volition. So since they arise together, there is the condition of root or root condition between ignorance and uh, volition. And number six, cognizance. Since they arise together at the same time, there is cognizance and also number seven, mutuality and number eight support number 19 association 21 presence and 24 non-disappearance so from this we understand that sometimes ignorance and formations belong to different times and sometimes different persons or different places but sometimes Conditioning state and conditioned state arise together. But one is said to be conditioning state and another is conditioned state as in 1, 6, 7, 8, 19, 21, and 24. So, when you understand Patthana, uh, you understand fully and correctly about the relationships between the cause and effect mentioned in the doctrine of a teacher samubhara or dependent origination. So here, ignorance is not the producer of formations of merit and so on, but it is a condition. And it is a condition that belongs to a different time and also with regard to Akusala Chaitas it is the cognizance group or cognizance condition that means they arise together and one is called a, a condition and the other is called the conditioned so now we understand that conditioned by ignorance formations arise means sometimes ignorance and formation may arise together. Although they arise together, one is said to be conditioning and the other is said to be conditioned. Now formations of the imperturbable, that means volition in the four Arubha Vajra Kusala Chaitas. Ignorance to four Arubha Vajra Kusala Chaitas. There can be only one and that is decisive support. That means you see the faultiness of ignorance and you want to diminish ignorance or you want to get rid of ignorance and so you practice meditation and you attain one of the four or four Arubha Vajra Jhanas. So when one of the four Arubha Vajra Jhanas arise in your mind, then they are conditioned by the ignorance because you want to get rid of ignorance and so ignorance serves as a decisive support for your 
the practice of meditation and for your attainment of jhanas. So here, the conditioning state and conditioned states belong to different times. So they can belong to different times, they can belong to the same time, they can belong to the same person, and they can belong to different persons. And that we understand through the knowledge of patana conditions. That is why understanding of patana conditions is important in understanding correctly the dependent origination. It would be good if we can go through to the end all these, but we have no time and also it will be very involved and so I will leave it to you. <laughs> and if you are interested, please read this chart with the path of purification. So the paragraph numbers are given in the uh, square brackets and so you can easily uh, go to the path of purification and read about this. Now, it is said that with regard to cause and effect, there are four kinds of views. One is one cause, one result. Second is one cause, many results. The third is many causes, one result. And the fourth is many causes, many results. What does Buddhism advocate? One cause, one result, or one cause, many results, or many causes, one result, or many causes, many results. <laughs> now, if we look at it, right, Avijja, Pajya, Sankhara, and so on, we may be tempted to say that, oh, teachings of the Buddha is one cause, many results. But the commentary say that the Buddha's teachings is not one cause, many results. Because although ignorance is here stated as a conditioning state, actually it is not the only conditioning state for Sankharas. There are other conditions for Sankharas to arise. Sankhara means Chetana, right? Chetana must have a cheetah arising so that it can arise. So, it, so the cheetah is also its condition. And then that cheetah along with cheetana must depend on the heart base. So heart base is also its condition. So there are many conditions for cheetanas or sankharas to arise. So avijja is not the only condition. But here Bodha said avijja is the uh, condition for formations because it is the chief of them, or sometimes it is obvious, or sometimes it is not common to others. So, in the teachings of the Buddha, we must understand that there are multiplicity of causes and multiplicity of results. So, the Buddhism accepts many causes, many results view not one cause, many results, and so on. So, in Buddhism, only the fourth one is accepted as true. Many causes and many results. So, all results may not be stated, but we must understand that here, the ignorance is not the only condition for formations, and so on. So, with the knowledge of the 24 modes of relations taught in Patala, we understand the dependent origination more correctly and in more detail and in, in, in more depth. Only when you understand the dependent origination with reference to Patala can you say you really understand the dependent origination. But the author of the original manual treated these two separately 
because it would be very involved and it would be very difficult for young people uh, to try to study these two difficult uh, teachings together. So he separated and he treated them separately. But the celebrated commentator, the Venerable Buddha Gosa, when he explained the dependent origination in Visuddhimagga, he explained the dependent origination with reference to 24 Patana conditions. And a brief description of these 24 uh, Patana conditions are to be found in the path of purification in that chapter, chapter 17, a chapter on the dependent origination. But in the path of purification, I don't know why this chapter was given the name conclusion, not dependent origination. So if you open the book, you will not see the header as dependent origination, but you will see the header as conclusion. Maybe it is the exposition of the last item before the practice of vipassana meditation. Now, Visodhimaga was written for those who practice both samatha meditation and vipassana meditation. So first he explained the samatha meditation and then before explaining the vipassana meditation he put in these chapters, chapters on aggregates, bases, elements, faculties, for noble truths, and dependent origination. And only after that he explains to us the practice of vipassana meditation. So it is like a conclusion, concluding chapter on the knowledge and necessary for the practice of vipassana meditation and so it may be given the name conclusion. So you will not find heading as dependent origination but it is the chapter 17. Okay now we go back to the manual. So 24 conditions are reduced to concepts, mind and matter or concepts nama and rupa. Now, what are concepts, what is mind, uh, what is nama, and what is rupa? So the manual explains to us here that the material phenomena are just the aggregate of matter. That means the aggregate of matter are the material phenomena. So. We must understand the material phenomena of in Pali, Rupa Dhamma as Rupa Khanda. That's quite plain. And then consciousness and mental factors, which comprise the four immaterial aggregates and Nibbana, are the five kinds that are immaterial. Now, please note, here Nibbana is called Nama. So they are also called name. I think instead of name, we should retain the Pali word Nama. So there can be a confusion. Is Nibbana Rupa or Nama? Now we see that Nibbana is also Nama. It is also called A Rupa. Arupa and Nama. So Nibbana is not Rupa, but it is Nama. But although it is Nama, it is not mind or it is, it is not mental property, not a mental state. It is a different state than Nama and Rupa. So we must understand this. Now, why are the Consciousness and mental factors and Nibbana called Nama. Now it is explained down the page, they are also called name. No? The four immaterial aggregates are called Nama. 
in the sense of bending because they bend towards the object in the act of cognizing it. The former are the meanings conveyed by the concepts, the latter the names or designations which convey that meaning. Now here, meaning does not mean what we understand to be meaning. Now when we study language, say we study English, and then we say what is the meaning of this word? And we think that the translation is the meaning. Actually, translation is not the meaning of the word. It is the translation of the word. It is the word in another language. It is actually not the meaning of the word. So the meaning of the word means something that is denoted by that name. For example, the word man. So the word man is a nama panyadi concepts as names. It is a name for a being say, who walks upright and who has two feet and two hands and so on. But the real man, the being that stands upright and that walks upright and, and has two hands and two, two feet and so on, that being is what is meant by meaning here. Because when we say man, that name represents the being, a man, a human being. So, what we call a human being is called Atta Panyati, concepts as meaning. I would rather call it thing concept and the other name concept. So, the name and the thing that is represented by the name. If you translate the word man to your language, I don't know what you call man in your language. So that will be not a meaning actually. That is, let's say you translate man into Chinese. So the Chinese word will be just a Chinese word. It is not the meaning actually. Now, the real meaning is the man, the being that is called a man. So there are two kinds of concepts. The thing concept or meaning concept and name concept. Almost everywhere we can get these two. Name concept and thing concept. Let's say a house. Now the word a house or the sound a house is a what concept? Name concept. And the building with the roof and walls and windows and so on is the thing concept or meaning concept. So there can be uh, these two concepts with almost everything. Here in the explanation it is given for example the notion of a four-legged furry domestic animal with certain physical features and traits is the concept as meaning of the term dog. The designation and idea God is the corresponding concept as name. So dog is a name concept and the four-legged furry domestic animal with certain physical features and traits is the thing concept. I think who wrote this had uh, American dogs in mind. <laughs> but not all dogs are furry. <laughs> okay. Now we have two concepts. Meaning concept or thing concept and name concept. And there are two kinds of concepts or uh, two meanings of the word panyati. The word panyati means what makes known, what makes others known, and also what is made known. So there are two meanings to the word panyati. If we call something a panyati, that can mean something that is made known or something that makes known. So the first, there is the explanation of 
concept as what is made known. What is made known means actually the thing concept. Now, land, mountain, etc. are called in Pali, Santana Panyati, formal concepts. That means which have form, since they correspond to the form or configuration of things. Now, a certain configuration of material properties in a certain manner, and that we call the land, or we call a mountain. So the concept land, mountain, etc. are called Santana Panyati. Concept of the form or configuration of things. There can be many kinds of concepts actually. And then house, chariot, cart, etc. are called Samuha Panyadi collective concepts since they correspond to a collection or group of things. Now, house is a collection of different parts and chariot also is a collection of different parts and cart also is a collection of different parts and so the designations or the concepts house, chariot, cart are called collective concepts. They are the collection of some things. And east, west, etc. are called Disa Panyati or local concepts or directional concepts since they correspond to a locality or direction. So east, west, north, south and so on. Morning, noon, week, month, etc. are called Kala Panyati, time concepts since they correspond to periods or units of time. In the manual itself, it is given as named according to the revolution of the moon and so forth. So that means the sun comes up during the day and the moon comes up during the night and they rotate around the earth. So uh, from the revolution of suns and moons, we say this is morning, this is noon, this is a week, this is month and so on. So these concepts are called Kala concepts or time concepts. And then well, cave, etc. are called Akasa Panyadi, special concepts, since they correspond to special regions void of perceptible matter. So a well, a cave. We call them a well, a cave because they have some space. A well has a space, a cave has a space, so that space is void of perceptible matter, you cannot touch the space. So that we call well, cave and so on. And then casino signs, that will come in the ninth chapter. Casino signs are called nimitta panyati, sign concepts, since they correspond to mental signs gained by meditative development. So when you practice meditation, especially the Kasina meditation, then you will get the signs, the learned sign and counterpart sign, and so they are called Kasina or signs because they are gained by meditation. You meditate on the Kasina and you get a sign in your mind. So there are many kinds of concepts and the list given here is not exhaustive. You can think of many more uh, concepts like this. And in the commentary on Puggala Panyati, there are given altogether including the six mentioned in the text, there are altogether 24 kinds of panyatis given by the commentators. So there can be many more panyatis or concepts. So this is concept, what is made known? What is made known by the name concepts? 
So that means we call a thing mountain. So the thing mountain is the one that is made known by the name concept or by the word mountain. When we hear the word mountain, we know in our minds that this is a, a kind of thing which is a sudden a collection of material properties in such a way and so we understand that that is a mountain. So the things that are denoted by the words are all concept what is made known. Now that is another kind of concept that is concept what makes known. Actually this is nama panyati or name concept. And that name concept which makes known, which makes others known, is of six kinds. One is the concept of the real, direct concept of the real. Two, the direct concept of the unreal. Three, a concept of the unreal by means of the real. And four, a concept of the real by means of the unreal. Five, concept of the real by means of the real. And six, concept of the unreal by means of the unreal. So in this way we have here six kinds of panyati or con concepts that makes known. Now here real means ultimate reality. If it is the name of ultimate reality, it is called the concept of real. And it is the name of thing other than the ultimate reality, it is called a concept of unreal. And then mixture of these two became the number three, four, five, and six. Now, say matter, feeling. Matter is a name concept. Now the word matter or the sound matter is a name concept. And this name concept is of real or unreal. Matter is said to be a, an ultimate reality because there are four ultimate realities. So the word matter or the name concept matter is the concept of real. Feeling real or unreal real so it is the concept of real you can pick up other names of the um, seekers one by one and all of them are the concept of real and then the next one concept of unreal now here land mountain and so forth because land is not an ultimate reality. What is ultimate reality is the material properties in what we call the land. So the land itself is non-existent in ultimate reality. So it resides only in our imagination and so it is unreal. Mountain also it is unreal. River unreal. There are many things that are unreal concepts. And then we mix these two together. The rest should be respectively understood by combining both. As for instance, possessor of sixfold direct knowledge, woman's wise eye consciousness, and king's son. Now, possessor of sixfold direct knowledge which is real and which is unreal. Possessor means a person. A person who possesses sixfold direct knowledge. So a person is unreal. So there is no such thing as a person according to ultimate reality but just the five aggregates or nama and rupa. So a possessor or a person is unreal and sixfold knowledge is real. So it is called the concept of unreal by means of real. 
and then woman's voice a woman is she real or unreal unreal and the voice the voice is sound sound is real because sound is one of the 28 material properties so the designation or the name woman's voice is a concept of the real by means of unreal I consciousness is I real or unreal I sensitivity it is real and consciousness is also real so the concept I consciousness is a concept of the real by means of real and then the king's son a king is unreal and son is also unreal so the concept a king son is the concept of the unreal by means of unreal so we get these six kinds of concepts that make known that make others known so this section is for nama panyati and the previous section is for atha panyati now comes the summary i don't know why bikubori did not give any explanation of this summary <laughs> it is an, an interesting and an important statement by following the sound of speech through the process of ear consciousness and then by means of the concept conceived by the process in the mind door that subsequently arises meanings are understood these concepts should be understood as fashioned by worldly convention and there are two verses so these verses show how we understand things when we hear something how many uh, thought processes pass before we know what we see is a man a woman a cow and so on so it is very interesting we will we will have a break now <laughs>